Okay, folks, let's uh, get seated. I'd like to call this meeting to order the October 24th uh, RTM committee meetings. Um, let's stand for the pledge. Representative Iacona, you have an announcement for us? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. PM Iacono, District 8. I'd like to welcome Cameron Janiski from District 8 and Brooks Veracino from District 10. Welcome. Thank you for volunteering. Uh, Representative Zesma, you have an announcement for us as well. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, I do, and I'd like to welcome Jennifer Barahona, is our new uh, member of District 5, replacing Will Diaz. Thank you, welcome, Jen. And I'm assuming you have committee assignments for all three? No, just as long as we know where they're going when, we're, when we break out at the end of the meeting. Okay. Okay, um, let's start out uh, with item number two on the presentation order, the ethics reappointment, Nancy Billington. We've heard from her before. Uh, I believe she is on WebEx. I guess she's not on WebEx, so. All right, and uh, we'll skip over that for now. Um, uh, the next one is item number three, ethics appointment of Will Diaz. I know that Betsy Brown did not hear from him, and I don't see him on WebEx either. So we're going to go to item number four, which is uh, Fair TV appointments, uh, Will Ferguson and Anne-Marie Lignisi. Um, Will, you're here? Okay, you want to? sit at this podium here, I mean this microphone in front of you there, and uh, let's just give us a little background about yourself and uh, why you want to be on this committee, our yeah. commission. Sure thing. Uh, so Will Ferguson, uh, new to Fairfield in the last couple of years, but uh, experience in media, uh, professionally, it's my day job, uh, a little bit of history in public service in the city, uh, sat on the county committee in Manhattan for a couple of years, so excited to try to bring that talent here and help out the town as best I can. Super, thank you. Any questions from any of the members? Uh, Representative Vergar. Hi, Jill Vergar for District 7. Thank you so much for volunteering to serve and to be here tonight. Um, I read through your application and it sounded great and that you had a lot of overlap and with this topic, but um, I did see in the application that you had originally intended to be in the Housing Authority, and I just wanted to make sure that you're good to go for Fair TV. Yeah, the original application was for the Housing Authority, and then that position was filled, so uh, Fair TV seemed like a natural place to be. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Representative Vergara. Representative Iacona. Thank you, Pam Iacono, District 8. Mr. Ferguson, I just wanted to thank you for being willing to serve. Read your application, was very impressed that you are a man for others. Thank you, that's the Fordham Prep, Jesuit education. The Jesuit education, all, all my boys. Thank you, Representative Iacona. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Ferguson, you're relieved of duty for this evening. Thank you for coming and thank, thank you, you for volunteering. Uh, is Ms. Langis, is it Langisi or is Langis? Okay, thank you. And just introduce yourself and uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on this commission. I'm Anne-Marie Lagnisi, and I went to school for journalism. 
I have a long history of community service and volunteer work, and I grew right up in Fairfield in Southport, and I saw the opportunity to serve and jumped at the opportunity, figuring everyone has a chance to do these meetings remote or live. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the body? All right, we're gonna, gonna make sure that we have no questions on uh, WebEx. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, the next item is item number five, Center Street Pump Station. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, you are here. You have to hold it down. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to see everybody in person for the first time. Uh, got used to seeing everybody on the screen. Um, so we're here for the, there are two items that are on this agenda back to back uh, for new pump stations and forced mains at each, of the, at each of the pump stations. The first one is for Center Street. Uh, the, the money would come out of the fund balance of the WPCA for $300,000. This, uh, this request is just for the design of the of the pump stations and the force main um, we there was one uh, one project from last sorry year. Jerry could you just get a little closer to the mic they can't sure. hear you on there yeah how's that that's good thank you good all right uh, there was another project for uh, Fairfield Beach Road that is already approved so the idea here is to group three of them together so we can uh, get some economies and uh, you know, just have one company come in and do all three, do the, the design for all th three of these projects. Uh, the pump stations are very old and uh, they, they need to be replaced. I'm filling in tonight for John Bodie, who would normally present this item. Um, he had a uh, death in the family and was unable to make it tonight. So um, I will uh, attempt to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Any questions, uh, Representative Bateson? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator, Ed Bateson, District 1. Jerry, thanks for this. My question pertains to both of these items. This, it sounds like this is just the design and engineering, correct? Just the design. Just design. Okay, yep. so do we have a ballpark of what both these stations are gonna cost? The uh, Center Street pump station will be about five million for the pump station itself, and three million for the force main. Um, if you want, I could comment on South Pine Creek. The next one is five million total, three for the uh, pump station and two for the force main. And okay. those are like uh, a lot of the. A lot of these projects, these are estimates and uh, are, are definitely subject to change as we're seeing of a lot of these capital projects that they are changing uh, fairly dramatically. And this is not, these two projects are not bundled up in the renovation of the plant, correct? This is separate? That's correct. Okay, I haven't seen uh, a capital plan for the WPCA recently. I think the only thing I've ever seen is something bundled up in the, in the town-wide capital. Is there any way before Monday you can pull that out and send it to us if it's still applicable or updated? If, so we, we started meeting, uh, the, uh, the capital plan working group started to meet, uh, I think we've had two meeting, two or three meetings now. And so part of that does include a WPCA capital plan um, which includes a number, uh, including the pump stations, as well as uh, several other projects, and including on sort of the back end of the project would be the, uh, some funding that we're uh, planning for the facility itself. And this, the, pros, uh, the money that we're using for this is coming out of the fund balance, WPCA? That's correct. And what is that balance now? 
13.3 million um, with the uh, with this use. I believe this would take it down to about 12 point uh, 12.7. And that 13.3 does that include the most recent sewer use that has been built out? Did that just take a huge uh, bump up? That was through uh, the 13.3 was through June, uh, through the end of June. But the that does of, not the end include of this last, the sewer right, use. Right, through the end of this last fiscal year. And then any projects that have been approved uh, since then, there have been a couple things that have been approved for to use the fund balance since then. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Representative Bateson. Uh, any other members of the body have any questions? Representative Vergara? Jill Vergara for District 7. Um, I'm glad that we're taking care of these. I was surprised to see that the Center Street pump station was built in 1965. So it seems really, really old. And um, I was wondering whether there are others along those same lines as um, in that age range. I know that the WPCA is going to start looking into uh, and has been looking into uh, all their facilities, and I, I, I can't speak to the age of all of them, but I'm sure if uh, that Mr. Bodie could probably provide that information to you. Okay, thank you. I'm just glad we're taking care of this now. Thanks. Thank you, Representative Vergara. Any other questions from the body? Sorry, Representative Gerber. Bill Gerber, District 2. Um, hey, Jared. Um, the pump, pump stations, I remember that was part of the um, resiliency plan that we got when it was part of like the Metro COG presentation. Um, and I don't remember seeing the Center Street pump station on that plan, but it would, I mean, probably not your area, but it would be useful to understand the, the last update of that resiliency plan, where we are with the other pump stations and whether this one was, was on it or is this sort of newly identified? My understanding is that all three, um, the two that are on here now, as well as uh, Fairfield Beach Road, that they're all, um, uh, they're all targets for Metro COG funding. but we get back to you with the details of that. Okay, thanks. So that, there, how many are there again? I'm sorry, you probably just said, but there's, there's Fairfield total Beach, South total, Benson, right? So the, yeah. the total pump stations, I believe there are eight uh, okay. in the town. Uh, Representative Regard just asked um, the other ones that are, that are old, but you, so, we have three on our plan now. Is it Center Street, Fairfield Beach Road, and South Benson, or? Fairfield Beach Road, uh, the design was approved last, uh, I believe in the springtime, and the two that are on here now are Center Street, Center Street and South Pine Creek. Okay. I'm just looking at, okay, I, just, I pulled up the Metro Cog one and I'm just confused because I don't really know, I've never looked at these before, there, but there was one listed as the South Benson Road pumping station. Um, I'm not sure what that is so. on, the, on the original plan. Mr. Hurley, you might have some insight for us. Hi, Bill Hurley, engineering manager. Um, we con uh, we usually refer to the South Benson uh, pump station as a stormwater pump station. So that was the difference. And as far as the other one, um, the uh, Eastern Turnpike pump station was just recently completed, the one by uh, Sacred Heart there. So that's at least half Run. of them that are in the hopper. So, okay, thanks. Thank you, Representative Gerber. Anybody else here in the live audience? Anybody on WebEx?
No, we got to, can we get the chat up on the screen? Maybe you can just put it in the, have it, there we go, thank you. Okay, uh, anybody else? All right, so that's... Okay, we'll get back to you in a minute, Nancy. So that uh, was items five and six. Um, all right, we're gonna go back to Nancy. Does anybody have any questions for Nancy Billington's appointment to the ethics, reappointment to the ethics commission? Representative Gerber. Um, Bill Gerber, District 2. I, I, is it appropriate to ask, because we never really get a chance to ask about the Ethics Commission and what's going on, is, is that appropriate that I ask some questions about what the Ethics Commission's been, been doing? And uh, no, it's a valid question. I mean, we did ask it uh, when she came before us, I believe, uh, last meeting or two meetings ago, but you can ask, sure. Um, uh, Carter, I'd like to challenge that. That has absolutely nothing to do with this appointment. She's not the chairman. If you want to report from the commission, ask the commission chairman to come and present. Go ahead. Uh, my I'd like to call for a vote then. I'd like to, I'd like to call for a vote. I, I think that that item is out of order and it should not happen at this meeting. It is inappropriate to be asking a member of the commission to give a report. Yeah, I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to withdraw this. I don't want to upset uh, Representative Ayapuna. Thank you very much, Representative Gerber. Thank you, Representative Gerber. Representative Carson. I, can you hear me? I think she had told us they had only had like two issues in the time that she's been on the uh, ethics commission. Nothing much was really going on. If that helps at all. No, I, I was just going to ask a question about the um, ethics hotline and whether how much it's been used and whether they've actually whether it goes to them or, or not. But I can, you know, I don't want to upset Representative Iacono. She's very sensitive on this. Okay. I want to follow the proper protocol. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Billington. Yep, no problem. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, item number seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve are all BOE. So, Angelus, you're up. We'll start with the Sherman School partial roof replacement. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, so I see a lot of new faces, welcome, and myself. Um, so what you have before you are the three, what we call the three, res excuse me, three resolutions. And what these resolutions do is once they're uh, voted and approved by all the town bodies, such as yourselves, uh, it allows us to present to the state for reimbursement on specific projects as long as we meet criteria, et cetera. So what you have before you is a re the three resolutions and number seven are for the, uh, let's see, nope, that's, I'm sorry, I'm looking at water pollution. Number eight is the board resolution for the town of Fairfield apply for the Sher Roger Sherman roof replacement. So there's the resolution, further resolution, and further resolution. There's three for each of these projects that you see before you tonight. There's no funding for any of these other than for approval for us to go before the state for reimbursement. At the very end, you will see there are two, there's one separate, uh, I forgot the nine, it is, number 11 is the only, up. Oh, is, nope, I'm sorry, keep going further. Number 14 is the only one that actually has a funding request attached to it at this point. Um, I can answer any questions about the resolutions if you like. Or 
All right, does anybody have any questions concerning the Sherman Representative uh, Bateson? Yeah, thank you, Angela. Ed Bateson, District 1. So all these are resolutions to create the committees and authorize you guys to go to Hartford to get money. Correct. But at the end, item 14, the dollar amount, does that include estimated costs for the projects above? For the only for the two roofs that an estimated cost is for the Roger Sherman partial roof replacement and the Riverfield partial roof replacement. Okay, uh, I see in all these resolutions that it seems that each of these resolutions carries a separate building committee specific to that project. Are, are who's populating those committees, or is that going to be designated to some other committee in a future date? It will be uh, the first select woman will appoint the building committee and the representatives from the building committee. That's a lot of volunteers. I believe that it's the special buildings committee is gonna do these two projects. They've done the last five, four or five roofs, so they're gonna be the ones doing it. So at a later date, somebody's gonna designate the authority to that. For, for the two roofs, yes, the, the select chair people uh, did vote on that already, and it is the two roofs, Roger Sherman and Riverfield, will be appointed to the standing building committee. The other ones you see before you for the air conditioning will be set up as a separate building committee. How is the state receiving the costs on these roof replacements? Do you anticipate any recovery? Uh, we do. We anticipate our normal percentage, but I don't want to give numbers yet because we haven't heard anything back. And you'll also see the reason that this is before you today and kind of earlier than normal throughout the year is that, as you see with our air conditioning projects, the state has put out a grant for $150 million for air conditioning and indoor air quality, which will be reviewed by the same committee that reviews our roof projects. So we feel if we're gonna be able, and we have to be approved before we can go out to bid for these projects, and all the uh, indoor air quality grant applications are due the first week in December. So we feel if we don't get these in before that mad rush comes into the committee, we may not get approval to go out to bid until after New Year's and well into the spring, which would jeopardize the projects for the summer. Okay, are you comfortable with the timing on Sherman? I know we had phase four or something that, are, are we done with Sherman after the roof or are we going back for something else at a later date? So the roof was part of the phase four renovation for Sherman. Uh, at this time, we've held that phase four. We didn't see need to go forwards with it at this time but the roof was something that we felt did still need to move forwards even without the phase four project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Representative Bateson. Uh, Representative Steele. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. On items eight through, I guess 13, you said we're not appropriating or spending. I just wanna make sure in the third paragraph of each of those it says further resolved town of Fairfield hereby authorizes at least the preparation of schematic drawings and outline specifications etc cetera, etc cetera. how is that funded is that just done internally that is funded through the approved project that was approved last year for the uh, 22 million dollars for phase one of the air conditioning projects so that funding will be used there in addition there is uh, the town has a earmark some uh, fu federal funding of the uh, from the ARPA money of one million dollars, and the Board of Education also earmarked one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars to use towards the uh, design phase of phase one of these projects. Okay, so all are covered. The design phase for each one of them. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Representative Steele. Representative Representative Iacono. Thank you, Pam Iacono, District Eight. All right, so just to be clear, that's being funded from ARPA, ARPA operating and a bond. Correct. Okay. Um, then on the item number 13, um, that that said it was subject to the Board of Selectmen this afternoon, did that pass? It did. Okay, and the only thing out of here that you're sitting on that is coming before us that is awaiting Board of Finance approval is the authorization of the 3.4 million. Correct, that will be presented tomorrow night. Okay, so everything we're hearing from you has been approved by the appropriate body with the exception of the Board of Finance. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Iacona. Representative Carson. Oh, Laura Carson, District 4. Um, I have a question. Bring the mic closer, please. 
I have a question about air conditioning. Um, I'm all in favor of air conditioning. I just, I'm just curious, um, how much does air conditioning, will how much will that increase the utility bill each year for um, the buildings that are being air conditioned? I, I have no idea, so I'm just curious, and, and that's then presented, is that put into the budget? I think I looked it up that maybe it accounts for like 4% of the school's total budget, and are there any incentives or programs to help minimize the cost of the air conditioning? The cost of installation, there's a few project, there's a few grants out there right now, one being the state grant that we're working to apply for. Um, the actual increase on utilities we're still looking at until we have more of a design phase of the project and know better of what type of equipment and the best way to handle each school could be differently, then we'd be able to lock in better with what the utility usage would be. We've also just appointed a uh, new position within the Board of Education, and we now have a Director of Construction and Energy Management who will keep a close eye on the energy management moving forwards. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Carson. Representative Brown? Um, Christine Brown, District 9. I also had a question about the air conditioning. There was a line in the backup that said that um, it would improve indoor air quality in non-air conditioned buildings by reducing the areas that can become conducive to mold growth. So um, is this system, the systems that are gonna be proposed, can they be run, can the air filtration be run without the air conditioning? Uh, again, it depends on the type of system we use in the buildings. Most of our systems now have, most of our buildings now have a DOAS system running in them, and the air conditioning is increased airflow to the DOAS system. But um, for the most part, most air conditioning units can be run with just exhaust or fresh air fans without actually running cooling. And that, and that's a filtration, right? Yes, so yeah. either MERV 8 all the way up to MERV 13 filters, depending on specification. Thank you, Representative Brown. Any other questions, Representative Kuhn? Uh, Representative Kuhn, uh, I'm curious, have we, um, are the plans all in place for the various air conditioning systems? A and I ask this because I had been working with Sal Marbido a little bit about trying to do a, um, a heat pump um, PPA kind of deal with a company, and I, I you know, we kind of lost momentum on that. I had to deal with some deaths in the family. Um, I is there still time to maybe resurrect something like that? There absolutely is. Um, and again, Mr. Morbido, kind of as you lost interest, not lost interest, but slowed down, he did as well, because now we've been given state guidance as to what the process will be for the grant reimbursements. So one of the things is, as we've mentioned already, the, we will have to go with the building committee who will have to make some decisions about the PPAs and the ability and how the direction we go. Oh, okay, so if we can, like Windsor did, if we can figure out a way to use this PPA program to offset or hopefully cheapen our expenses with the air conditioning going forward and whatnot, that's still a viable option. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. And, Thank and, you, uh, and I'll get back on it with Sal and my contact in Windsor. Thank you, Representative Kuhn. Representative Vergara? Jill Vergara for District 7. Thank you to Representative Kuhn for looking into that. That sounds like a great idea. Thank you. Um, I had a, a, a few different questions kind of all over the place. One, I wanted to clarify what Representative Iacono um, said about the funding. I didn't completely understand what is being funded from ARPA operating and it was ARPA operating and bond. What What is that? So the ARPA funding is the $1 million from the town and the $116,000 from Board of Education. We plan to use that for the beginning phases of the design work, which will not be reimbursable by the state. So that's why we're kind of using that money first so that we can get design started and things moving. Okay, that's for the roof replacements? That's for the air conditioning the projects. Okay, the air conditioning projects. Okay, thank you. Uh, and why for item number 13, the, the ward um, Fitzhouse um, HVAC, 
Why did it say in the backup that it's not eligible for reimbursement? This is, uh, this is part of the new state grant that just came out, the $150 million. So we're going to apply for that particular grant for this, pro for this, re reimburse uh, for this project. The project, was <coughs> the project was approved by all bodies in the, fall, in the spring of last year, but because we now receive the information from the state, we're kind of moving to catch up with the state requirements for reimbursement. Okay, yeah, because I did see in the backup that it was supposed to be summer 2022 and then and then start, and so the kids would be able to be back into the classrooms for fall 2022. So it, it's one year delayed. One year delayed, yes. Okay. Um, sorry. So for the roof replacements, I was concerned to see that the Riverfield roof was um, characterized as that there's rapid failure there. Um, when was the roof done? The original roof at Riverfield was in 1991. Uh, we've, I characterized it as rapid failure because we did have to do a, uh, a kind of a major temporary repair to the cafeteria area of that roof over the summer, which was a single membrane that we used to cover and watertight the cafeteria, very similar to what we did on the Osborne roof prior to doing that replacement. Okay, I, I really appreciate you being on top of this. I also saw in the backup that you're using a consultant to identify issues with our roofs, and I think that that's really important. It just worries me to get to the point where someone's saying there's rapid failure, and we're talking about mold and everything else. This is like one of the most important things for the enclosure of the building is our, our roof. So I, I hope that we can be more attentive to them so that we don't flirt with a disaster like mold. Absolutely. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Representative Vicar. Representative Wolk. Jay Wolk, District 5. Um, so I wanna go back a little bit to Representative, what Representative Carson brought up, which was a good question about um, how much it's gonna cost, you know, for all this air conditioning, you know, HVAC that we're, be, we're gonna be putting into our schools. So. Um, now that we're talking about Ward, I see here with Fitz House, um, does, doesn't, doesn't Ward have solar paneling at the school? Ward does have solar panel, and just to clarify, the Fitz House units that we're talking about are replacement for existing units. No, no, that's okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, what I'm bringing up is the solar paneling will alleviate a lot of the cost of the electricity to, you know, to, to, to run the air conditioning in the schools, correct? So. My point is, I don't know how many other schools we have, um, Christine, Christine, whether we have other schools that have solar paneling, I'm not sure. Is that something that we can look into to put solar paneling in these schools and that would help with the cost of running them? Absolutely, so we do have school, multiple buildings that do have solar panels on the roof and some with the carports at like the high schools and the middle school, Roger Little Middle School. Um, one of our reasons for assigning our new position of energy management is to look closer at the solar, the energy production, and what the benefits of having it are. We do have uh, multiple solar companies that reach out to us almost daily because we do have Roger Little Middle School, we have uh, Osborne Hill, and Burr have brand new roofs, and that's what they target is roofs that are new to put solar on. Um, yes, and, and, and um it does alleviate the cost, so thanks. That's a great project, thank you guys. Thanks for everything you're doing. Thank you, Representative Volk. Representative Fury, use the mic, please. You need to hold it, hold the button down. Uh, Marty Fury from District 1. You need to stay holding the mic. <laughs> I just have a question. I know that um, we're redistricting schools and my kids all go to Dwight. So in order, before we decide to do funds to replace roofs and everything, should we figure out what's happening if schools are closing? Um, like, 
how we should allocate those funds, you know. I, I just know there's a lot of moms and dads are worried about Dwight closing, and we're talking about mold in a school, and I know Dwight has had mold and has ha needs has issues and doesn't have central air or anything like that, so it's just kind of hard to hear this conversation, and all these parents are wondering what's happening, you know, with their kids at their school. I absolutely understand that. Um, the Board of Education is once again, talking about redistricting, we, um, I'm going to try to, this is a very uh, in-depth issue, so I'm going to try to keep, keep it close. Um, it's not really on the agenda, but we approved the racial imbalance plan. Redistricting is something that we're going to be looking at as a means of better balance in the district, but we also have been um, faced with a number of facility utilization issues, which also brings in the um, redistricting conversation. In terms of the roofs, we have a waterfall. The Board of Education has a waterfall for about 10 years which we put all of our major projects. Right now, HVAC um, is a priority of the board. Le for all the schools? For all the schools, to try to fast, to try to fast track that. Um, historically, we've been bringing in air conditioning and mechanical means of fresh air through the renovation process, but it's taken a long time. Um, Riverfield received their HVAC as part of their renovation, Holland Hill, Mill Hill. Um, the plan was for Dwight and Jennings for when they get their renovation. The that HVAC, though, that, that I mean, the decision right now it is still on the waterfall, but it's pushed. It's pushed back. Um, right now, for the next five years, the HVAC is the the priority right now. And you know, roofs really can't be put off for all the reasons that we talked about. Um, Riverfield is really at the end of its roof. We had some issues with water infiltration in the APR last spring. As Mr. Papa George said, we had to do an emergency roof repair. So as much it, as it would be nice to spend that money on um, HVAC, upgrades to sports facilities, other upgrades in the building, priorities need to be roofs, heating, our boilers have come before you, uh, and that's really where the focus is right now. The conversations about the renovations at both Jennings and Dwight will continue. No decisions have been made about closing the school. I know parents are very understandably so concerned about it. The discussions will be happening at the board level and through the facilities committee. The facilities committee meets to Wednesday, and was it um, 2.30 in this room, I believe. And I just encourage everybody to, you know, to follow along and let your constituents know also just to follow those meetings along. And as we move forward with those discussions, we'll be having community conversations, town hall meetings, and um, engaging the PTAs and parent communities to kind of move that, that decision forward. But nothing has been decided right now. Right now, um, really, the HVAC projects are a priority. The roofs are a priority. HVAC is coming before you kind of fast-tracked just because of this funded, the state funding that's been put available, $150 million. Districts are prioritized. They're looking for shovel-ready projects. Um, and speaking to some other districts, other districts are scrambling right now to even be able to apply. So I, I am very thankful for the work that Mr. Papa George's team has done and to the support of all town bodies for um, approving the HVAC consultant because we are farther ahead in other districts in terms of knowing what our needs are, knowing what the costs are, getting ready to move forward with schematics. So, while we may not be priority-wise, you know, up on the list as compared to some of the cities, I think that we're in a good position, hopefully, to, um, you know, maneuver mul multiple projects before you tonight to hopefully get some of that grant funding. So I appreciate, um, you know, the Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance, and for you to really taking all of these up on one agenda and moving it forward quickly. <coughs> and uh, feel free to reach out to me, you know, privately to give you more details. And I, under I understand. I'm a I'm a Dwight family too, and so I, I get it. I agree with everything you're saying. I just think we should consider if we're going to be closing a school down, you know, where we could allocate those funds. Okay, we're not at a BOE meeting, Marty, so I'm going to. All right, we're, 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 if you have a question about these particular items, let's go on those, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Representative Havey? Thank you. Representative Havey, District 6. I have a question about warranties. Are they, what are the, has warranties changed and what are they? The roofs we are expecting to get a minimum of 20 year warranties. Thank you, Representative Hay, that's done. 
Both of these roofs are what, 30 years old? 30 plus years old, we've gotten more than there. They're both there. Uh, originally installed in 91 with a uh, warranty extension program done in 2012. Yep, so they've seen their life expect expectancy. Representative Graceffa. Good evening, Andrew Graceffa, District 6. A uh, couple questions about the outline spec for question about the roof and a question about the, the air conditioning. Uh, that you, and I know, understand you may not have all the technical answers yet, not going through schematic design. For the roof, are you looking at uh, a light colored roof to reduce uh, sort of local heat island impacts uh, to the neighborhood? We have not, but we will be working with an engineer so we can bring that up to them. Okay, and then with the, um, with the air conditioning uh, systems that you're looking at, you mentioned uh, using a DOAS system with filtration. Are you looking to have a minimum spec of a, of a MERV 13 filter? And then are you looking at any additional um, filtration, whether it's UV or anything like that for uh, you know, virus avoidance? So we would be specking with a main filter of a MERV 13. A lot of our systems have a pre-filter of a MERV 8 and then a MERV 13. Uh, we have used ultraviolet lights in some of our systems in the past, and we've had a lot of issues and concerns with them, so we tend to stay away from them. If there's specific areas within a building that we identify that may need additional filtration systems, we could do a small in-room unit. And one, one last one. With the, with the DOAS systems, I know that one of the, they do offer a lot of outdoor air, you know, uh, delivery, but, one, but it, the concern about the, the increased energy use uh, is significant. We've seen uh, on a number of my projects that, that if not managed properly, they can, they can cause energy use to spike with the amount of uh, preconditioning of air that has to come into the system. I just would advocate that you, with the energy manager and the, and the on-site operations team, that they take a look at that closely uh, for operations. Absolutely, and one of our big things, as many of you know, uh, we are doing a major prevent, uh, not prevent, but a controls project, HVAC controls, building control project at Ledlow High School. We hope that this will be the uh, flagship control system through to move throughout the district. And some of the things that we've identified with this new system is the ability to have a, uh, occupied sensors so that we have our current buildings have unoccupied and occupied unoccupied and occupied sensors. So if the building is in use from Monday through Friday, eight to three, it goes into occupied mode automatically. And then when it's not in occupied mode, it goes into an unoccupied mode, which limits the amount of control, not control, but uh, temperature in the building. Uh, the newer system has an occupied, unused, and then unoccupied. So if we have a classroom where the staff and the students go to lunch and we have a 30 or 40 minute period where that room is not being used, it goes to kind of a pre-step backwards so that it's not cooling down and trying to maintain occupied temperature. So it's a big savings for utilities that way. Thank you, Representative Graceffa. Any other questions on these items? Representative Vergar. Uh, Jill Vergara, District 7. Sorry, I thought of one last question. I got a little confused with one of the bond resolutions because there were two included for the roof projects, and the second one included um, had a reference to Holland Hill, and um, I didn't understand why it had dropped off for the 8,000 for Holland Hill, and it's... I'm sorry, which one was that? Um, it, it was, uh, two were included. One was the appropriate, the correct amount that's in included in our agenda in the warning. And then the second one was a different amount, 3,489,757 3, for roof replacement projects at Sherman and Riverfield, but also designed for Holland Hill Elementary. I apologize, that was an oversight. The Holland Hill was removed from that design work. We've already completed that design work as you guys approved the funding for it last spring. Thank you. Okay, so we'll need to amend that. Anybody else? OK. 
Okay, nobody on WebEx. Uh, all right, Angelus, Ms. Vitali, thank you for your presentation tonight. Thank you. All right, so Mr. Schmidt, I think we're item 14 on the agenda, Sherman and Riverfield bonding. Do, did you need to go through that? Or are we pretty set? Anybody have any more questions on that? We good? Okay, item 15 on the agenda is the revenue surplus transfers and Mr. Schmidt is here. On which, which item? Uh, on the bonding resolution, item 14. Okay. Um, I, John Kuhn, uh, District 7. Just curiosity, 20 year bond, are we limited in any way to only do 20 years or can we push it out to 30? Uh, we typically do 20 year bonds but we're not required to, right? We can choose our maturity. I believe that the, uh, I believe state t statute limits us to 20 years. Okay, thanks. Okay, Jared, uh, the revenue surplus transfers. Okay. So <clears throat> we presented to the Board of Finance uh, last month on the uh, state of the FY22 budget. Uh, the surplus was approximately $12 million. Um, it's a lot of money, a lot, a lot for, uh, for the town of Fairfield. Uh, a lot of that was from a uh, single property, which I'm sure everybody uh, is, is familiar with by now, which was almost $7 million. Um, we, uh, so the, the total amount related to the revenue side is about 8.4 million. Um, and the spending side, we had a surplus of 3.6 million. Um, so what we're proposing tonight uh, has uh, passed the Board of Selectmen um, and will go to the Board of Finance tomorrow is to take the revenue part of that and to uh, effectively hold it in abeyance um, we will be coming to the boards with a plan to use that funding to, um, uh, for a number of things. One is uh, for Penfield Pavilion, um, the proposed reconstruction uh, of Penfield Pavilion. Um, also to do the remediation at Penfield Pavilion and remediation at the, uh, generally at the sites around Fairfield. So. I understand that there is some, uh, you know, maybe some debate about what should be done at Penfield Pavilion, so we're not, at this point, not identifying a specific amount to be spent there. We're taking the full amount, the 8.4, holding it aside um, until we can come to you with a, a full proposal on what to do with all the money for, um, for those purposes, the remediation and, and the construction. So this is this is just to kind of set the money aside for now. Thank you, Jared. Any questions, Representative Iacono? Yeah, my Icono District Eight. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt, for being here. I just wanted to express for the record record how disappointing it is that we have to set aside this money for this type of project that was absolutely unnecessary and continues to haunt us. Boy, how nice would it be to take $12 million, divide it up, and send everybody a tax refund. So it's incredibly disappointing to be still dealing with stuff from the previous administration that didn't get done the way it should have gotten done. I agree, and uh, you know, it's not just the money, but the time. We spend, uh, you know, Tom Bremer and others spend an inordinate amount of time uh, working with consultants, working with the regulatory agencies. Uh, it's It's, yeah, it's, uh, I, I can't put it into words how, how much time and, mo and the money you, you can actually see, but the time spent is, uh, is, uh, is a lot. Any, 
Any other questions? Representative McCormick. Karen McCormick, District 2. Um, I recognize, Mr. Schmidt, that you're not um, part of the legal team that represents the town's interest, but is there any report back at this point on the status of any type of recuperation of uh, funds from the, the persons ultimately responsible? Is that still on the table in terms of possibilities, as far as you know? It's still on the table. Yeah, I, I can't comment beyond that. Um, yeah, that, that would have to be for a separate conversation. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Representative Parham. Cindy Parham, District 2. I had a question about the use of the pavilion. Um, after this month, there's no longer any events taking place or contracts being taken or signed. And we've been told by FEMA not to accept any further contracts past October of 22. As far as people using the pavilion, we have, uh, we are anticipating starting work there this fall, uh, starting remediation work. So there's not going to be, it, it won't be available. Representative Kuhn. Representative Kuhn, John Kuhn, uh, District 7. Um, to revisit possible um, funds that we can uh, get back, uh, there had been some discussion about a FEMA grant at some point that we had lost and that maybe we could revisit. And I'm wondering if we have ever had any discussions with FEMA about whether that, the, that grant that went away could still be alive, could still come to us, and if that's a possible source of revenues that we might see in the future? Uh, we are trying to bring back that issue, and um, the question has been asked of FEMA whether or not, because we didn't get it the first time around, um, whether or not we could get it this time because we are strictly following their, uh, their procedures and um, their regulations. And so um, the question has been asked of them. We're, we're waiting to hear back from their uh, most of our conversations have been with their regulatory section and we're waiting to hear back from their grants people to see whether or not that's a possibility. And also, uh, you know, doing whatever we would need to do uh, to be in compliance and be able to get that grant if it is available. Thank you. Any other questions from the body? Representative Gerber. Bill Gerber, District 2. Um, hey, Jared, can you go into a little more detail on the revenue surplus, excluding the um, the tax sale, which you say is 7. So the revenue surplus is 8.4. Do, do you know what the cause, like it, when you compare budget to actual, um, what caused that difference? So there were a number of... Um, larger changes, including the, uh, obviously on the property tax side related uh, uh, most particularly to the one property. The, uh, beyond that, you know, that was, a, that was a big portion of it. That was uh, probably 80% of it. Um, we've had increases in state revenue um, in municipal aid to Fairfield. Um, that was not anticipated and, and um, was made known to us after the state budget was adopted, um, that was about an additional million dollars. Uh, building per uh, conveyance uh, revenue was up, conveyance tax revenue was up about 1.4 million. Um, those were those were the big ones, and then there were some uh, some other revenue sources that were uh, lower that offset that. Um, did did uh, the collection rates differ from what you expected? Or? The collection rate was higher. It was uh, just over uh, ninety nine percent. Do you remember what you budgeted for? I'd have to get back to you on that. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Representative Gerber. Any other questions? Representative Bateson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ed Bateson, District 1. Uh, Jared, on item number 15, I just want to make sure I understand the grid down there where it says, now, therefore, be it resolved. We're transferring money out of these five accounts to the Philpott Reserve? That's right, to the remediation account. Okay. So in other words, these are all these are all positive balances on these accounts. That's where the extra money is, these actual accounts. That's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Representative Bateson. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to the next item. And Jared, you're still up. Item 16, coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds bonding. So these are, this is uh, ARPA money. This is the, Ar the uh, ARPA grant. If you remember when, the, um, when you all voted on this last year um, and we uh, effectively um, asked for authorization for the full amount of $24.8 million. Um, and so one of, there was one change at the time that didn't get incorporated in officially into a resolution. So one of the changes that, um, that all the boards made at the time was um, to remove $450,000 that was for the performance stage um, at, the, at the History Museum. Uh, so th one of the things that this resolution will do is to remove that $450,000. The other one that uh, we found out about recently uh, last week was that we had another item in, in the ARPA grant projects, which was to, um, s to provide fiber optic to the town, to town buildings and the Board of Education so effectively, we would, um, you know, had this gone through, we would have owned the, the fiber optic cable um, that would run between all the town buildings and the Board of Education. Uh, currently, we, we lease the, the fiber optic uh, infrastructure. Um, when we got the estimates, uh, when we went out to bid for this and we got the estimates back, uh, actually the bids back, they were, uh, s the lowest one was significantly higher, it was $900,000 higher. We had originally uh, requested and all the boards approved 2.4 million and the, uh, the lowest bid was 3.3 million. Um, so at, at this time, what we're proposing to do is, uh, uh, you know, effectively to deallocate, unallocate that money um, and which gets kind of to the crux of this proposal, which is uh, to use some of that money, uh, 700,000 of it, to um, fund what is also, uh, what is also increased in cost, which is the Stratfield, uh, Stratfield Neighborhood uh, Four Corners project. Uh, that, that project also um, uh, exceeded what we had estimated um, and so we're proposing to reallocate some of the money that we had uh, originally um, been approved for the fiber optic project and to use it for, for the uh, Stratfield neighborhood. And so that's, that's sort of the, the crux of this, but it's happening in, in a couple of different, uh, couple different steps. Uh, I'll point out too that you'll notice that the the original appropriation of 24.8 million is down to 22.64. That's because the um, the uh, deallocation of the um, fiber optic. So there is a, a approximately a two million dollar difference um, right now. There would be uh, there would be no uh, additional proposal for that. But we are uh, seeing how some of these projects are coming and the higher costs, we are uh, for now going to keep it there as a buffer, um, you know, so that uh, as other projects come through and the, uh, we're finding out that the costs are higher, that we would have something to work with. 
Thank you, Jay. I, I just have a question. I'm curious. I wrote in my notes from our meeting last week, the capital planning meeting, um, that the Stratfield project was $600,000, and now we're uh, looking for $700,000. What, what's the $100,000 increase there? The, the $100,000 was uh, the $600,000 that uh, we talked about last week did not include contingency. We had to put some contingency into this. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Representative Bateson? Yeah, Ed Bates in District 1. Jared, follow-up. Was this approved by the Board of Selectmen today? Yes. Representative Spolier. Representative Spolier, District 4. Um, I just want to be understanding this correctly. So we are de-appropriating these funds from these two projects. And then do we have to approve appropriations? So like Stratfield Village is more, or is that just assumption and you can go and give the money, the extra money to the projects we've already approved, or do we have to increase those amounts in the approval process? Yeah, so that's why we're here. We're presenting to you to, uh, for your approval of these changes. So to, uh, in order to spend the additional $700,000, on uh, for Stratfield Village, we need we need the approval of the boards, all three boards, and the uh, the RTM included in that. Representative Iacono. Thank you, Pam Iacono, District Eight, Mr. Schmidt. So to be clear, you're asking us tonight specifically to reallocate. The, these two items, the museum and the optics, and to allocate 700 to Stratfield, Stratfield that, that's the ask? The ask is for 700,000 for Stratfield, and that the, it, so the 450,000 is really just uh, kind of codifying what has already been done um, for the uh, performance stage that was taken off the list last year. And the uh, 2.4 million for fiber optics is, is, is being deallocated. Okay, forgive me. Is that all in the backup? Did I see stuff on Stratfield? A little bit? Yeah. Can, can we get it, can we get it? Is there an update as to what the Neighborhood Association contributed to that? Because I know that they did it. A million and a half last page? Sorry. Uh, it's 150,000 from right, the association. All right, thank you. My apologies. There's a hundred and something pages in here. Thank you. Represent Representative Carson. Laura Carson, District 4. Um, just so I understand, um, we're taking money that was already, I thought, assumed to cover all the projects in the ARPA. Now they're coming in higher, so we're sort of taking the money for these projects, what happens to all the other projects down the line or the ones toward the end when we run out of money and there's no reallocation, deallocation, then you have to come back to us somehow and provide the funding from some other source or like is those, those projects gonna be up in the air because you can't find the funding for that or how does that gonna work? A lot of these projects um, will be going out to bid and at that time we'll know uh, for sure um, because um, some of the some of the uh, appropriations that were originally done here were just estimates. And so as those bids come back to us, we'll know for sure what the dollar amount is and we'll come back to you, which is why you know, we don't wanna spend all the, the $2 million difference that I mentioned before. We're kinda keeping that in there as a, as a buffer so that as uh, these projects come in and if they are over what we estimated, that we'll have money there that we'll, we would come to you and, and request uh, a reallocation of that money to the project. Okay, but so your estimate, I don't have a lot of confidence, because I don't mean to say that, but if you're telling me the Stratfield one is now 700,000 over what we thought it was gonna be, that's a huge discrepancy. And with inflation going up and we don't, we don't really know and I'm concerned that they're all gonna end up being out of whack. And so then how do you end up funding those? Say you do run out of money, the worst case scenario, and you don't have money for some of these projects that we promised and we voted on, what do we do then? So some, some may come back over budget. Others are just a set amount where we fix the dollar amount that would go to the project and it's not 
determined by um, you know by the work that would be done or the supplies that would be needed. It's just that we're you know we're giving the project. For example, the uh, the one one that comes to mind is uh, uh, grants to some free mental health uh, organizations. That was just a fixed dollar amount, so that's not going to change. And there are others like that. Uh, some of the other big projects, uh, the, mil the million dollars that uh, Angelus mentioned early for the Board of Education for their HVAC, that was just a set dollar amount. Uh, and a couple of the other larger dollar amounts that, um, that, that could vary and could cause things to get way out of whack have already been resolved. Another one that comes to mind, we had uh, $3.7 million for the, um, the police radios. And that that that's done. That you know, it was it was a set amount in the contract. So, um, so, so there 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 will be some that come in over, but I'm not I, I'm um, comfortable keeping two million aside for now. And as they come in, like I said, we'll come back to you and and make a request if we need any of that money. Thank you very much, Representative Horton. Uh, Margaret Horton, District 9. Um, just to clarify, you're talking about the Stratfield project coming in 700,000 over. In reading the backup, I'm a little bit confused because you have the sidewalks project as Southport and Stratfield project in the amount of 700,000. So could you clarify, is it just Stratfield or is it Southport and Stratfield together? So the, the money was split. There was uh, 250,000 for Southport and 450,000 for uh, for Stratfield. And so what we're proposing is an additional 700,000 for Stratfield. There are other sources of funding in there as well. There's an Urban Act grant. Um, and so it, it's the, the total project was, I, I wanna say two million, including all sources. So if I'm understanding then it's the 400,000 plus 700,000 just for Stratfield, and that does not include any, like the Southport is done. Uh, Bill, do you? Uh, no, the Southport one isn't done yet. Um, this, you're absolutely right, the same thing could happen here. The Southport one, uh, we'll put that out to bid probably during the winter or spring. Uh, there could be a savings cost of if the contractor who's going to be doing the Stratfield one wants to stay in town, maybe he gives us a, a discount or something when we go out to bid for that, or somebody else may uh, bid on it as well. It would be an open bid then, but we don't know what the numbers will be yet. Okay, thank you. And just what's the, I mean, to go from anticipating 400,000 and that being 700 short on something seems like a huge discrepancy. I guess I'm confused by why there's such a huge discrepancy. Uh, that took our engineering consultant by and the town by surprise as well. Um, we did have three competitive bids and they were all within like 100 or 150,000 of each other. So, you know, if it was a big discrepancy, you know, or there was only one bidder, I could understand. But the fact that there were three of them uh, and they were very uh, competitive. I think there was only a 50,000 difference between one and two. Kind of shows that at least it was a, a fair bid. You know. Thank you, Representative Horton. Representative Astorita. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ken Astorita, District 10. You just, you just said something which, which piqued my interest. If we were concerned about getting, you know, some sort of a volume discount, if you will, why wouldn't you bid the Southport and the Stratfield project at the same time? As mentioned before, the Stratfield one, um, <coughs> they've been waiting four or five years. Uh, Southport's probably not that far behind, but uh, we wanted to get the ball rolling uh, uh, for uh, the Stratfield project. Um, if it is approved as originally proposed, they might be able to get a jump on certain sections this year uh, because, um, you know, there are, there's, there's the core area where the four corners are. That's gonna be the uh, a majority of the project, but on the fringes, say by Owen Fish or towards Mon uh, Montauk Street, uh, and then maybe up a little bit on Fairfield Woods Road, they might, the contractor might be able to uh, do some of that work before the quote, what we call winter shutdown. Thank you, Res Representative Astorita. Uh, 
Just to comment on uh, Representative Carson's comments, I mean, some of these projects, I mean, these numbers were are over a year old. Uh, the Southport and the Strathfield one are about four years old. Okay, so, so that's painful in itself. Um, so we're going to see some of these projects come in under what's on this paper and some that are going to come in well over, like the uh, fiber optics. So, I mean, these were best guesses for most of these a year ago when we approved them. So um, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. I think it's a smart move to put some of them. I mean, if you look at the playgrounds combined, they came in at about $100,000 under budget. So if, if we have some sort of contingency on ARPA funding, we have, by taking this one big number out, the uh, fiber optics, um, you know, we have some contingency to play with for projects that go over. Um, so, Representative Wolf. Jay Wolf, District 5, Aya Bill. Um, I just want to tell it, say ev to everybody that this project is, is, is needed. Um, this is my neighborhood. Um, it's an unsafe um, corner. Uh, I've seen many times that people, people crossing and running across the street because people aren't stopping. Anyway, I remember, Bill, when, when the intersection was done that you worked on um, up between Melville and, and Fairfield Woods, that Representative McCarthy Vahey got that done. Um, and you did too, and you, you, that project was, was not easy either. So um, I, I know even though this money were over budget, budgets are just estimates. They're not, they're not cast in stone when there's a budget. Um, so there is gonna be overage, there's gonna be, and like Mark said, that Representative McCor uh, McDermott said that, you know, there's gonna be overage and there's, there's gonna be times where we're gonna save money. So. This is a much needed project. I want everybody, hopefully we can all vote yes and, and get this done. Thanks, Bill, uh, for everything. Thanks, Jay. And again, just to keep in mind that we did have a consultant that gave us an estimate. Engineering has, has an estimate, and we even uh, refer to a, a state manual for estimating as well. Uh, this one, I think, is a direct product of, uh, you know, short supply chain, COVID, you know, all this other kind of stuff. Um, I just read somewhere where at least September prices had stabilized or decreased a very small amount. So hopefully we haven't seen too, you know, too much more spiking. Representative Zesman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bill, is, is um, Stratfield the oldest of the estimates? You said it was four years. Off the top of my head, I'd have to say yes. You could. Are you are you asking among the ARPA projects? Yes. What how many? How many would be about you know uh, yeah, that age? I don't know. I, I, I'd have to go back and look at those. Thanks. Representative Spolier. Representative Spolier, District 4. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any other projects you expect to remove the appropriations for, um, like the fiber optics, for instance. Um, I'm not sure where we are with like the electric cars and if we're gonna be getting projects like that in a timely fashion. So maybe we're looking at removing some appropriations for other projects um, in a similar fashion. Right now, no, we don't. Um, we are having some difficulty finding cars, finding electric vehicles to purchase. Um, but you know, we'll we'll continue to uh, to look. Um, as I scan through the list, I'm not seeing anything that would, um, you know, that that would be a candidate for deallocation at this point. Um, but you know, as these things come up, we'll we'll come back to you. Representative Iacono. Thank you, Pam Iacono, District Eight. 
So I think it's great that Stratfield's gonna get done. It's waited a long time. I don't begrudge that neighborhood at all. Um, uh, it's nice to actually see something get completed. What, what priority is gonna be given to the Southport area since it was bundled in with this for any leftover funds? I, I, I don't know how anyone else feels, but as one member on this body, I would like to know that any excess surplus funds are now gonna be driven towards Southport, which I believe Mr. Curley said has been a close second to Stratfield and waiting to have an appropriation made there to complete their issues as well. Um, you know, the only thing, the, I guess the only way I would answer that, I'd say it's, it's an important and it's a priority project. And, um, you know, that's why we're, we're keeping the, the two million aside. And if it, if it comes back and it's higher than we anticipated, then, um, you know, we, that would certainly be a, a, a candidate for reallocating some of that $2 million. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much more I would say about that. All right, thank you. If that, that could be relayed to all the, um, to the administration and to the other bodies that, you know, that that, to me at least, should be a focus. Thank you. Representative Vergara. Um, Jill Vergara, District 7. So when do we have to use this money by? Was it December 2025? We need to uh, commit the money by December 2024 and then it has to be spent by December 2026. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Um, and I'm not sure if you've provided this to the Board of Finance al already, but I was wondering if you could use that appendix that was given to us and just mark out what has already been both vetted, like this one, to get s more solid um, uh, estimate figures, and also ones that have been completed, like that we could take off the list and we know that they're they're done and completed. We have a tracking sheet that we're using internally to um, for the department heads to fill out uh, on a regular basis, and so we can provide you with an update of that, which will show what's what's been done uh, to date. Okay, thanks, that would be helpful, thank you. Sure. Representative Britton. Peter Britton, District 10. Um, just to say that Southport statement that uh, Pam said there before, I would hate to think that the Southport project would get any sort of sacrifice or be in affected by what's going on at Stratford, right? That money is in there. And, and I want to make sure that, you know, Southport doesn't get reduced or not fully committed to like we have to, to this point, right? So sort of saying the same thing in a different way just to make sure that the project stays intact. I want to hear from you guys that that will be the case. Yes, that's right. The, so as I mentioned at, at the outset, um, there was 250000 for Southport and 450, um for Stratfield, and so the 250 is, is still there, is still intact for Southport. Thank you, Representative Britton. Representative Gerber. Um, thanks, Bill Gerber, District 2. Um, Jared, real quick, the, the money is in the bank, right? We've already received all the money from the Fed. Yes, we actually just got the uh, fourth because it came in um, four tranches to us. We got the fourth one two or three weeks ago. So we have. Th and, and that totals to the total on your, um, your list if you add back the, so is that like 24,790 or do you have another number? So the total amount that we received was I believe just over 24, it was 24.8 and change. Um, I wanna say 24.3, something like that. So um, that's, the, that's the total amount that we received. 24.3 or 24.83? okay, good. So that's a little more than what, I think the list at originally added up to 24.7. The, um, the other, question I have is are, are you sort of strategically staggering you know how you're going out to bid I just want like in case there's an overage on the ones that you go out to bid on that you can draw m on more than the 2.4 million that there may be some other ones that you might not do under the ARFA 
you know, if they're important, we would have to fund them. But is that a strategic way of going about it? I, th I guess I would answer that by saying that the, you know, the departments are uh, determining what their, you know, if they have multiple projects in, in their departments that they're making a determination of what the priorities are and, and also evaluating how, how much lead time they would need to get it done, knowing that we have these, uh, these deadlines that are in front of us. Um, but I, I would say, and you know, I think you'll get a sense of this when you see the, the update, the, the ARPA update tracking sheet. Um, you'll kind of have a better sense of what the, um, you know, what has been done. And, and there's also a, uh, uh, a comment section in there where um, the department heads can make a comment about how nothing's been spent yet, but it'll be going out to RFP and you'll, s you'll uh, have a better sense of that. I just wanted to add, there also might be like, um, for that Southport one, we're still working with the DOT on that, getting the final approval. So that's why sometimes one project might be ahead of the other is because of uh, permits. And we have a couple of them with, uh, that require environmental permits, and we've applied for them. So when we get them in, then we can move on to the next phase. So sometimes permitting is what, it might not have anything to do with finance, right. but it's permitting. But um, I, I'm just trying to sum up in my mind what basically everyone's been asking, which is, you know, what happens if you run out? And, you know. So if, um, um, because there's so many overages on so many of the ones we've bid on and we haven't gone out to bid on a bunch of them. So are, is your plan not to go over the 24.8 um, on any of these? And as you go out to bid and you start to solidify the numbers, you're going to have to drop off ones if you know more than the 2.4 is needed there might be a few others that need to drop off so based on the projects that are remaining that I know haven't been done and the um, the size of those projects uh, in terms of dollars I, I I'm comfortable having the two million dollars there and that um, uh, and, and hopeful that we won't need more than that. Um, as I was rattling off some of the projects earlier, a lot of the big ones have been done. We know what they are. We've, we've uh, the money's either b been spent or committed, and um, so the you know there are there are some smaller ones uh, left on the list that could go over, but I, I don't expect them to exceed the two million dollars that we have as a buffer. Thanks. Sorry to sort of repeat what everyone else was saying, but I just wanted to hear it summed up that way. Thank you. Any other questions? Nobody else at home, so thank you, Jared. All right, next up is uh, item number, agenda order 17, tennis center lights. And Anthony's not here. Jared, you got yeoman's duty tonight for everybody. I'm filling in for Anthony too, uh, who is at another meeting this evening. So um, this is, uh, although surprising, um, pretty simple. During the during February of last year, when we um, passed through all the boards the capital non-recurring for projects under a million dollars, one of the items on there was new lighting at the tennis center um, for a hundred thousand um, dollars. We uh, had to go out to bid, obviously, for the work, and when the bids came back, uh, the lowest one was two hundred thousand. So this request is for uh, to add a hundred thousand to the um, to the authorization for the tennis center lighting project. Okay. Any questions from the body? 
I just I'll, I'll ask a question. What 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 was the main driver on the increase? I mean, double the cost. I don't have the breakout of what was uh, what was driving it. Whether it was um, the work that was being done or the or the uh, equipment, the supplies. Um, yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that to with those details. Representative Bateson. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Mr. Moderator and Bateson District 1. Uh, Jared, I know that maybe you're not running point on this thing, but it, it sounds like maybe when we did this, this was at the height of COVID and supply chain issues, whatnot, material shortages. Has anybody sat down and said, maybe we want to put this on hold and revisit this in a couple of years when things smooth out? or? Are we just going to go ahead? Is one of the issues? I mean, any everything came back more expensive at the height of COVID, and judging by the way things moved through town hall, it sounds like this might have been done at that time. The bids. So, I mean, if we revisit this in a year, could it be back down to a hundred, or is this just the new norm? Um, you know, I think we we would consider that, except the the lighting is so old, and they've been having problems with the wiring. Um, uh, over the, the, I think the past few years, the past several years, and so uh, I, I think it makes sense to move forward with this, even though it may cost us. Uh, you know, we may be buying at the peak, or or maybe not, um, because it's going to continue to. I mean, who, who know who knows when something when one of them is going to fail, and we need to do a, uh, you know, a rush order to get them replaced. Um, because that's kind of the state that they're at right now, where they could, you know, things could, could go bad there at any time. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, um, you know, these are this is LED lighting, um, so there will be savings and and the operating budget um, for the tennis center anyway for the uh, the cost of the lighting. Um, so there's uh, there should be approximately 40 percent savings for the uh, the cost of the electricity for the lighting. But we're just, you know, we're concerned about it because they they are so old, and we have had problems with it that it gets to a, a, a you know, a, an extreme level where we have to really uh, spend a lot of money to make any kind of repairs. I get what you're saying. M my concern is that the overage, to Mr. McDermott's point, was was just so. It was double, so I. I I'm kind of leery on this one just for the simple fact that, you know, for the, you know, I have had to do some investing in real estate over the past couple of years, improving some properties. And I, there were several things I had to put on hold just for the simple fact that estimates come in were just like, what? Are you kidding me? And meanwhile, in the back of my head, I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe, uh, maybe in 18 to 24 months, this is going to smooth out. Maybe a little bit more competition is going to breed into the marketplace, and I might be able to revisit this and get a better deal. That's the only reason I'm bringing this up. I just want to see department heads do a concerted effort to sit down and think that way, to say, okay, well, all I have to do is go to Board of Select and Board of Finance and get some more money to cover this. I just think there might be some savings achieved where you can put it off, maybe have Anthony sit down and sit there and say, maybe I can, you know, strap this together, get through for 18 months or whatnot. It's just, I'd like to, that's what I'd like to hear you guys say when these issues come up that, like, we're, we're looking at it. I understand you want the 100, but... You know, when I look at it, I'm just like, wow, we went out to bid at the worst possible time. No wonder it came back double. Maybe if we do it in a year from now, it might come back at only 50%. That's all I'm thinking. That's all I'm suggesting. I understand. And a Anthony might be able to give some more light to this and, uh, you know, uh, more detail on the, the rationale for doing this immediately. But um, I, I will definitely relay that to him. Thank you, Representative Bateson. Representative Zesma. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Liz Zesma, District 4. Um, Jared, so section number five, it, you know, I can see obviously that it will reduce our um, electrical costs by 40%. But the additional play during the summer season in the evenings, does that bring additional revenue? So is that another offset perhaps to the, to the cost? So the uh, yeah any any additional play is would obviously bring more revenue. Um, 
uh, you know, assuming that sessions were held that uh, that the town's conducting then. Um, so that, you know, that, that is a factor. Um, I'm sorry, Jared, aren't we, aren't we renting? We're, we're not, we're, we're a, it's a landlord, aren't we? We are. Yeah. Yep. So yep. we're not getting any additional money from additional play. The I don't believe. The, uh, I, I don't, I don't know the, the operation of it. I'm, I'm not sure. And, and just to clarify, uh, one of the statements that you made when I, uh, when I said the 40%, that's that's paid for by the tennis center, so that would be savings to the tennis center. Okay, so you know, in the aggregate, the expense to us is the lighting, and those other externalities don't impact that cost. Not the town. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Jared. We'll uh, make sure Anthony's here next week for that. I will pass it on to him. Okay. All right. Uh, our final items are the two ordinances. So we'll start with the Arts Commission ordinance. Um, Represented by Icona. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Through you to whoever can answer it from uh, you, you know the sponsorship um, on membership terms and compensation. I'm confused by the language that's in here that says the membership of the commission shall be comprised of Fairfield electors to the extent possible, and shall include at least one representative from each of the following. The first part is to the extent possible. It can't be to the extent possible. They must be electors of the town of Fairfield. So is there an amendment coming forward to address that? Um, that's one question. The second part is, shall include at least one representative from each of the following. Local cultural council slash arts council. Cultural organizations, at least one artist. Organizations that represent artists. For-profit creative businesses. Local businesses or a chamber of commerce. Knowing that we have to populate this with electors, why are we making this so restrictive that there has to be one of these, it says shall include, and then list these things. I, I think you are absolutely positively limiting your pool of people who can serve on here. And define artists, what does that even mean? I mean, that's so subjective. I mean, you have to file a tax return that says you're an artist. Um, I, I have a major concerns with this whole set. May I? Oh. Representative Wackerman. Thank you. Um, you're right about the electors, and that's something the town attorney pointed out, and, and I, we're going to make an amendment to that next week to correct that. Um, and then those categories are required by the state statute for uh, forming a cultural district. So we would have to comply with, we'd have to have those particular members among the other members in order to have it be a cultural district commission for purposes of getting that um, designation, which would then allow us to have funding and publicity for the things we do. Thank you for that clarification. So what, is there a way to go back and look at this so that are there workarounds on this? Because I think you're going to have a major problem finding one, two, three, four, five, six of those things based on the fact that in the town of Fairfield you must be an electorate in order to serve on a commission. Like how, how is there flexibility in that language the way that this is written? I don't know. I, I'm sure, I think we talked about this in L&A and, and we thought we'd be able to populate it, but um, this is the, the language from the statute, so I don't know if, if it's not possible. We'd have to find out about that, but I think we could populate it. I mean, you, you're, you're going to have to find an electorate, a local cultural council slash arts council. Can you give me an example of what that is? Um, I'm going to leave that to the Board of Selectmen, but I think one th it might be the um, History Museum or... We can, we can also consult with the um, Economic Development Commission of the state to see what kinds of things they're thinking of. They're, 
and Mr. Barnhart is going to help us with this as well. But I'm confident we, I mean, a town like Ridgefield was able to populate its um, cultural arts commission, and they're much smaller than we are. We have a lot of great resources in our town. I, I understand that, but does Ridgefield have a, a qualification that you must be an electorate? There are a lot of great people connected to a lot of organizations, but they don't necessarily live here. So I, I, I don't think, respectfully, that you can leave it to the Board of Selectmen to determine what a local cultural council slash arts council is. Or is that what we were advised by the town attorney? They are allowed to interpret what that means? I didn't ask him that specific question. He didn't have any issue with this. I think with 62,000 people in our town and lots of really talented people and organizations, we should have no problem. But it will take some work. And Mr. Steele may have comments because he's uh, a sponsor as well. Re Representative Steele. Thank you. The only... The only thing I see here, I, I think Mr. Baldwin made one uh, change, and he he had the word should written in there instead of shale, and it, that is which I he may have done that for the very purpose of not limiting it. Although if you said it is, and I I thought we had straightened this out, but maybe I'm mixed up. Um, is it, so it is a requirement to have those six or five groupings represented in the if it's an arts district. Yeah, remember it says that in the statute. I think he yeah, said that. Yeah, I'm wondering then why he changed the language to should from shall. I don't, to me they mean similar things, so I don't really know. Yeah. I don't well, know. Yeah, I mean, I think the shall is obviously has to, and should is will try to. So I, I guess the question is, if, if Mr. Baldwin knew that, why did he insert that? Is that something we can go with? And again, I think we, w we all want the same thing for this. We want this to happen, ultimately, and we want to bring people in who want to serve. Mm -hmm. Does this restrict, I mean, this, we want to we do this, so why, why restrict it if we don't have to? But maybe, as you said, we have to. I would just think that has to be ironed out. He's, he said it has to be electors. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, the, the electors uh, is one thing. Yeah. Yep, that's one thing. The other is uh, has, ha if we have an arts district that the representation comes from each of these five entities. Mm -hmm. And that could either be should come from or shall. And he had should. So, I mean, this is, it's minimal stuff, but it is a, it's. Well, we can look at yeah. the statute too, and I think that's what's required. But well, that, that would be my concern. I'd be way more comfortable changing the language to should instead of shall. I, I just don't want this commission to fail and be hung up on populating it. That just seems to be, that, that would, that would be a bureaucratic thing to get stuck on when you're, you're looking to raise funds and build mm -hmm. a cultural center. So I, I think that it would be a lot more prudent if it's allowable to move that to should. And if you guys could get that all straightened out before we vote on that, that, that would be great. I'll try to get in touch with the state um, commission too and see if they have some guidance. And, and just my final comment on that is we'd hate to not form an arts district because we can't find one person from one of those five categories, right? I mean, we, we don't want that. No, so of course. if we can work yeah. around that, that'd be great. But yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Representative Astorita. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ken Astorita, District 10. I just wanna make sure the establishment of this district does not create any sort of funding liability for the town. All the funding would come through various private and state grants, correct? Yes, that's right. There's no, there's no cost to the town. No. Thank you. Uh, Representative Pastilli on WebEx. Uh, hi, Sharon Pastilli, District 10 WebEx. Um, given the categories, I, I really am not in favor of that option of having the form or the, um, you know, the representation from the categories. The only question would be, you know, number four, like organizations that represent artists. It would depend on, uh, you know, like what the definition of artist is. But we have multiple examples of for-profit for-profit businesses, multiple types of artists who live in town, multiple cultural organizations. So it, it, this is not gonna be an issue at all. 
Thank you, Representative Pastilli. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Um, next is the artificial rubber infill ban order in ordinance. Yeah, well, you can there or if you want to, whatever you want to do. Be my guest, Representative Vergara. Um, I, I didn't pre prepare any uh, presentation. I just figured that it had been up before us last month. Um, but if anybody has any questions, or if you want me to kind of give a little summary of what we're doing in the ordinance, that's, that's totally fine, too. Representative Astorita. Yeah, thank you. Just a, a quick question. Um, and thank you for all the research that you've done. But I just want to make sure before we approve a resolution like this, are, are there any legitimate reasons why the town would in the future want turf that had that, the rubber in it, or does it not? I don't believe so. I think that even Anthony Calabrese knows uh, and does not want to use the artificial, the, um, the rubber infill, because this is only a limitation. It's not for artificial turf. It's for an, a limitation on virgin and recycled rubber. And so this enables us to continue to try to um, improve our fields and help our players, but use better products like TPE or Envirofill. But it also gives them the flexibility for our pre-existing fields if they feel like it's a health and safety issue that they need to continue to use the encapsulated rubber for those specific fields since it w they, were, they were created and formed with um, the crumb rubber, then, then we leave that to the Board of Education and, the, and um, to uh, Park and Rec to decide. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. That is our last item. We can now break out into the committee meeting, the committees, separate committees. Um, there's five of us, so who went in the closet last time? <laughs> Don't make <laughs> LNA go in Maybe the closet. Maybe rotate, rotate who goes in the closet.